Hey guys, it's Jake Mace. Here are some of the nunchaku I'm practicing with today. Of course, nunchaku or nunchucks, Japanese term. I train Chinese martial arts, so usually we call it a arjie guen, a two-sectional stick. And everyone knows these weapons from Bruce Lee, of course, but also from Michelangelo, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I have a few different varieties. I have about 50 pairs over in my storage behind the camera here. And I'm just using one with a ball bearing today that has a chain, one with a cord that's old school style, and then a custom one that um, was made for me custom by a master craftsman, custom wood, custom bevel, custom string. For the past many years, I've been uploading nunchaku tutorials for you guys here on YouTube, but the current climate of Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook has allowed me to meet a lot of you digitally through social media and see how you are practicing. 100% of you who have sent me videos of yourselves with or practicing with the nunchucks have incredible spirit and you guys have great energy. I would also say that 99% of you are practicing your nunchaku techniques incorrectly. That is, you're practicing them wrong. And so I wanted to clarify a few things in this video that will help you guys become a nunchuck master, especially as it pertains to real world self-defense application using the nunchaku or the nunchucks. I love these old school cord versions of nunchaku, but I'm gonna save those for later. I'm gonna use the ball bearing one for the time being. And I want you guys to always hold the nunchaku halfway or higher. So these two red little collars here on this nunchaku, you can see that they are for your hand to go against or a little bit below. I like to hold my hand right in the notch of that cut right there. I don't care how many Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle videos that you've watched or how many video games you played where you've seen folks use the nunchaku. I want you guys to train the nunchaku very simply and very practically old school style. And so I'm not really too concerned with you guys doing all the flipping moves, um, becoming nunchaku jugglers. I'm not too concerned about that. I want to know if you guys were attacked by somebody and you had to defend your life with this weapon, could you do it? Could you save your life or somebody else's life if it was in jeopardy? Of course, these techniques and these moves are only used for self-defense. They also can be used every day for fitness and for giving you a very good hand-eye coordination. I do like the old school Bruce Lee movies because Bruce Lee, if you notice, didn't get too flashy. He has a few changes, a few overarm, underarm changes with the nunchaku, but he doesn't get too much into the flipping it in the air, spinning around, catching it out of the air. He always maintains hand control of his weapon. He always does a few practical spins. You'll see him shooting somebody, you'll see him smacking somebody, and the most razzle-dazzle Bruce Lee gets is a few overarm, underarm changes, and he might even do a few changes around the waist. So I don't want you guys to think that the nunchaku has to be juggled or has to be thrown in the air. I want you guys to get in a good solid stance like this, if you wanna copy me right now, and I want you to start with just a simple horizontal spin we call one spin. When I teach my beginning students at the third level, the nunchaku, it's their second weapon they learn. The bow staff is number one. And I have them do this for quite a while. And if you notice, I'm not too close to my body. I don't wanna to be too close right here, all right? I'm also not stiff arm, I'm not too far away. I wanna be holding the nunchaku like I'm holding a tennis racket, about to hit a tennis ball. I want the elbow, to be connected to my hip, to be connected to my body, and I want the power to come from my legs. So my feet are firmly gripping the ground, my knees are bent, and I'm trying to get the whole body into it. I'm here on a very cold, cloudy day in the Pacific Northwest, on the border between America and Canada, and I'm just getting a good workout going on. I'm trying to stay warm. So I might do about 50 or 100 cuts like this. When I'm about 20 cuts in, I try to picture the bad guy. I just want to be smacking the weapon as if I'm hitting somebody in the head, or hitting somebody in the elbow, or hitting somebody in the knee. And I'll just be nice and relaxed because when I fight, for real, I wanna be nice and relaxed. I wanna have all my strength and all my speed. And relaxation does that. So head, elbow, and knee and get about 50 to 100 of these movements, back and forth, back and forth, different levels. After that, I try to get comfortable with my chucks. And so I'll do a up and down vertical strike. We call it number two move or number two technique. But I want it to bounce off of my tricep. The tricep is the back of the arm. So the top red part of the chuck I showed you earlier, 
the part nearest to the chain is hitting my arm and it's lightly bouncing off. See how it just kind of bounces? It's not actually striking me. Okay, as a nunchaku master in training, you guys have to remember that it's the bottom part of the chuck that has all the power. That's where all the power and all the velocity generates and kinetically moves from the earth into your body, through your arm, out the weapon, and culminates right there. And that's what you want to hit your opponent with, whether it's a thrust or a smack. So when it hits you with this top part, you're safe. Nice and safe. Okay, check it out. Just that bounce. Can you guys see that? So I'll get about a hundred of these, and I can go as powerful and as fast as I want on these guys, and I try to keep my other hand in my chest, okay? I don't want it to be all weird shaped or just down at the side. I want it to be in a disciplined position right here. And I'll get about a hundred of these, but I'll kind of turn. I'll hit somebody to the left, forward, to the right. Okay, and I'll visualize my opponent. So if I ever do have to defend myself in real life, I've already done it in my mind a million times. That'll give me the most likelihood possible of victory and of survival. And victory in the martial arts is surviving. And surviving without being maimed, without being hurt. Okay? So here we go. I'm going back and forth. 50 or 100 repetitions. Then, of course, we have to change hands. We have to be ambidextrous. We have to use both hands. Everybody is a switch hitter when it comes to my students, at least, for the nunchaku. So the first technique here, we're going for different levels. High, middle, low. And the nunchaku, when it's done in a smacking fashion like this, is considered a soft weapon. And since it's a soft weapon, and since the Chinese martial arts loves yin and yang, we have to go to hard parts of the body when a smacking motion is done. So, soft weapon equaling skull, elbows, or knees, the bony parts of the body. Okay, 50 or 100 times. And then of course, getting comfortable with the nunchaku hitting you, Number two move, number two technique. Vertical strike. Going to the left, going forward, or going to the right. And again, I like to keep the strong stance the whole time. I hate it when I see people just like showing off with the chuck, doing all kinds of fancy moves. It's a big pet peeve of mine, and a lot of you guys have been Instagramming me at Jake Mace Tai Chi, and you've been showing off, and I don't like it. It just shows a lot of ego. I want somebody who's calm, somebody who's collected, who's confident and comfortable in their own techniques, and who is training the nunchaku not only to get in shape, to learn hand-eye coordination, but also to use it as a general self-defense weapon in the future if that situation were to come up. I would rather see you guys learn the 16 nunchaku techniques that I teach to beginners that are all inside my online school. If you guys join it for five bucks, you can get the link below this video. Okay, now I'm starting to feel like my hand muscles are warming up, my body's getting warm, and my mind is becoming focused as it needs to be for this weapon. So I want to unify left and right and do one of the only few transitional moves I do with the nunchaku, which is a little underarm catch. And just a little bit of a vertical spin in between, underarm catch. A little pop and go, underarm catch. And see if you guys can do, I don't know, 50 of these without missing. And if you miss one, like this, and you miss it, you start over again, okay? If you get to 49 and you miss, I'm sorry, you're SOL, start over again. So catch, other side. And see if you can have 100% success with your catches. Being in the, uh, the cold weather here of the Pacific Northwest is actually harder than the deserts of Arizona where I used to live because if I miss and I hit my fingertips with the chuck, it's very cold and it hurts a lot more. Then you can try to tighten it up and do no vertical spins in between, only catches. This is a great transition because at some points when you're fighting with the nunchaku, 
you have to transition from left to right side. But I don't want you guys to ever take your hands off the weapon. Okay, keep your weapon. This is a great move to learn how to do that. Transition while maintaining control. A hundred times, here we go. And the final practical technique for this video is gonna go back to our vertical spin, number two right here. And we're going to catch it on the way down under our arm. You see that? Up, catch. Up, catch. Look at it from the side. Up, catch. And then it sticks out the back. Up, catch. Up, catch. Keep it going. If it pops out like this, does not count. Start over again. Each time you have to catch it so that the chuck is sticking out toward the person behind you. For those of you who follow my iron bone and iron palm, iron fist and iron body videos and instructional tutorials here on my YouTube channel, the nunchaku is definitely in the category of iron body training because it will make you tough. Right now, it's smacking against my ribs, my armpit, these weak areas of the body. So if you train the nunchaku as well as the bow staff, as well as the chain whip, as well as the spear, as well as the sword, the three sectional, the daggers, all these weapons, will make you a stronger human, a more capable human, a more athletic human, and they'll also make you tougher, physically. Once we've caught it, I want you guys to snap it, shoot it out, and back. And every time we shoot, we're gonna also catch it in the exact same position, so that the chuck sticks out toward the person sneaking up on us behind. And when you guys wear a gi, a full-on gi or martial art uniform and you punch your sensei or your shurfu will always talk about the snap you want to create the snap you want to create with your kicks the snap you want to create with your punches that pop 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 that snap it's a quintessential sound and a quintessential technique in the martial arts to create that pop that snap we want to also hear the snap with the nunchaku so listen to the sound of it It's a lot of force on the hand, a lot of force on the under part of the arm and the ribs. And this is gonna be the technique with the nunchaku that's considered a hard technique. It's shooting out, hitting somebody, and coming back in. So since it's a hard technique, we wanna aim this one to soft parts of the body, like the midsection, the neck, the groin. Anything that is soft will definitely feel the effect of this shoot. Okay, I need you guys to work on these techniques. Then I'm going to film another nunchaku tutorial for you guys tomorrow. And I'll meet you back here on my channel to show you guys some higher level techniques. But you have to get these ones down first. Strong stance, okay, really strong stance. Use your whole body and visualize that opponent in front of you. And I want you guys to survive. Please guys, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this and hit the bell button down below, which turns on my channel's notifications so that when I put out a new nunchuck video, you guys won't miss it. You'll get a notification on YouTube saying, hey, check out this nunchuck video. It's pretty sweet. Give me a comment down below and let me know, do you like the nunchaku, the bow staff, or a gun? Which of those three weapons is most effective in the real world? And I always go down there and read all the comments. I've got some excellent nunchaku like this that I found with my friends over at Karate Mart. I'll put a link down below. You guys can check them out. Um, I would recommend going to their nunchaku page and just picking out any of their nunchaku as long as it's legal to have nunchaku where you live. Whether it's a chain pair or a cord pair, get a few of each. They're very inexpensive and they're a very fun weapon to play with and train with every day and they will make you better at sparring because they will overtrain you to be a better athlete, a stronger individual, and a much better and sharper human being. <laughs>